Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, as this Tory minister's politics beautifully made to look foolish over the triple lock pensions. Now, this was last week's opposition motion day, as you'll probably guess. And not only were they doing a debate on the papers of the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, as you already know, they also got the Tory party all hot under the collar about the triple lock, calling it all political theatre. Well, after Shadow Secretary of State for Works and Pensions, Jonathan Ashworth, had finished his speech, it was then Mel Strides, the new Secretary of State for Works and Pensions, and at the moment, to plead his case. We'll start with Mel Stride, saying how much they are compassionate Conservatives and how they always have the pensioners' backs and all that. Then SNP MP Dave Linden asked him to give way, and then the nonsense began and was ended with fellow SNP MP Alan Brown telling a few home truths. All those, Mr Speaker, all those measures and more are clearly indicative of the fact that this government cares about those that have the least and is there to protect them at every turn. And I give way. To the Secretary of State for Giving Way, going back to what you were saying earlier, you, you'd think that actually before Covid and before the war in Ukraine, everybody was absolutely hunky-dory and there was no problems at all. Exactly. The reality is this cost of living crisis isn't a recent thing. It's a result of 12 yes. years of Conservative austerity. Yep. But when he talks about the, the hard fiscal... Dis- when he talks, if, if only they get so outraged about pension or poverty, Mr. Speaker. But when he talks about the hard fiscal decisions that are going to have to be made on the 17th of November, does he understand? For my pensioners in Belvedere, they are absolutely shocked that the government is not doing enough whilst lifting the cap on bankers' bonuses. I, I think I'm surprised by the honourable gentleman's intervention because I think most people recognise that when a pandemic comes along and contracts the economy by a greater level than at any time since about 1709, the year of the Great Frost, that when a war breaks out that has a huge impact on the cost uh, of energy and electricity and oil uh, and gas, when we can see the consequences in terms of inflation, I think there are very few of our constituents up and down the country who would not accept that they have been major contributors to the challenges we have. And indeed, the IMF only yesterday, the IMF, Mr Speaker, only yesterday stated that around a third uh, of economies uh, in the world would be going now into recession. We are not an outlier. We are right in the middle of the pack uh, of nations who are suffering the consequences of the events that I have described. But could I conclude, Mr Speaker, by... by, Well, I I give way to the Honourable Lady. The Minister for giving way. Um, He has been telling us that the government is committed to protecting the most vulnerable and looking after pensioners. That will ring hollow to pensioners in my constituency who are devastated at the squeeze on public services, seeing libraries closed all over the place, libraries that they rely on as as places of social hubs, places where they can go and interact with people, and on the problems that the local authority is having in providing the social care that they need. These are issues that really affect them. I know it's not his department, but will he commit to speak to the the Cabinet about them? Well, the Honourable Lady raises a perfectly legitimate concern, and we are all concerned in this House about public services. Certainly on this side of the House, we care very deeply about public services. But I think we have to be honest, as I was saying, Mr Speaker, with the British public in saying that times are extremely difficult and there will be some very tough decisions. Now, the Honourable Lady shakes her head. Economically, you have really three choices. You can either raise taxes, you can cut spending or you can borrow more money. The Labour way we know, and that's to borrow, borrow, borrow. And we all know where that, unfortunately, leads. So so what we need from the... What we need... What we need... The the, the Shadow Secretary of State needs to calm down. He's getting a bit excited. He's getting a bit excited. What what we need... What we need... And it's... Order. 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 Mr Ashworth, you need to calm down. Uh, uh, no, no, I'll make the decision on these to be calm, and it's you who's got to be calm. Come on, Secretary of State. Mr Speaker, you're a man after my own heart. We are, we are on the same page. I, I couldn't agree with you more. It was a very timely intervention. Thank you very much indeed. That does bring me to the, my closing remarks. To say that... There, there, I, I won't now. There, there are... Uh, I, I do uh, respect the fact that the Right Honourable Gentleman has brought this uh, motion forward, and to the extent that it underlines the absolute importance of standing up for our pensioners, then I welcome it in that sense. And this side of the House always will be there to support pensioners. We always have been in the past, we are now, and we always will be 
in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 We now come to SNP spokesperson Alan Brown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, just to pick up some of the comments the Secretary of State made, I noticed it. He started off by trying to claim there wasn't much elimination from the, the shadow se- secretary speech, and then we got absolutely no elimination from his speech either. Still no clarity in what the government is going to do. And as I said earlier, it's, it's just not adequate to say it's irresponsible to actually come forward and provide clarity on what's going to happen with the triple lock. Yeah, here, here. The secretary kept saying about being honest with the public, so be honest with the public and tell us what's going to happen with the triple lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end there, he was attacking Labour and the old trope about Labour does borrow. And I'm sure he, not that long ago, was back in the money budget that was all about borrowing to give tax cuts to the richest. Uh, That's uh, economic madness. So is it, does he want to com- come back to the dispatch box and apologise on that? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. on that, Mr Speaker, I can confirm that I'm certainly happy to support this motion. It's simple, and by referencing the Tory manifesto, then it should actually win the, the support of this entire House, hopefully without the chaos that we witnessed in the last Opposition Day debate for fracking, yeah, which I know yeah. that was also the day that the former Prime Minister did a U-turn at the dispatch box when questioned by the Honourable Member um, for Ross Skynler Harbour, and she did a 55th U-turn and said she would protect the triple lock. Ah. So again, that's why it should have been easy for the government to, to further uh, confirm that yeah. rather than holding on to this line about waiting until next week. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now I remember the time when Kamakwaza Kwatang's mini budget was read out in Parliament, and I also remember when Mel Stride, even though he did say he had concerns about the Office of Budget Responsibility not being able to produce its normal scrutiny. I also do remember him saying how much of this mini budget he did support. So I completely understand where Alan Brown is talking about. And this nonsense about labour and borrowing, it's utter tosh. As Richard Murphy of the Tax Research UK blows that out of the water in a post he wrote in 2021. And I'll leave a link down below for you to read. So it's all utter tosh he's talking about, isn't it? Utter rot. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below and until the next time I shall bid you farewell and take care.